right, everybody, welcome to Banter Blitz with Grandmaster Pascal Charbonneau. An exciting one today. I'm sort of warming up the audience for. Um, oh, give, give me one second here. I got to make sure my want to make sure my sound output is is good. Um, I am following the chat uh, obviously today. Thank you, uh, Decker, for saying you enjoyed my last banter. I'm gonna get started here. I'm forgetting to make moves. Of course, uh, got a. I'm gonna play this exchange exchange law variation. By the way, you will have noticed I put a discount code up. Uh, in the scene, that is because we are offering uh, today a um, a discount code in honor of the Gata Kamsky uh, Cristobal Hernandez match, we, um, which is uh, starting just after this. So I'm going to be streaming for probably close to an hour and a half. Um, this variation, I feel like I had maybe this position in the game against him last week when I did a banter blitz. I'm not too sure. He might have played a little bit differently. Um, you know, sometimes they play bishop f5 here, and then, you know, you have a choice with white of either taking or uh, or retreating. Now, I think, um, so should I start with knight d2? I think I'll start with knight d2. The, the knight on d2, if he plays bishop f5, then I can sometimes take and kind of come back. So I'm just going to f1. Um, I think that's the best square for it. By the way, I have my uh, famous legend mug, famous legend shirt, of course, today, of all days, you know, with... Uh, Gata uh, playing against Cristobal in just uh, a couple of, uh, in not too long, I figured that it would make sense to uh, to be doing that. Again, if you're not a premium member, I can only accept challenges for pre premium members, so uh, it is a good idea to become one today, especially with the discount code that we're offering. All right, so he goes knight h5. Um, I'm also drinking sparkling water to stay hydrated. Of course, uh, I drink way too much coffee as it is. So, um, all right, what do I do about that move? So, knight f4 could always take it. Queen takes f4. I might start with queen b3. Um, you know, threatening the pawn on d5 since the knight went to h5, not defending it. Uh, if he plays knight f4, then I could take on f4 and then take the pawn on d5. Looks like that shouldn't be any real compensation there so he's got to figure out how to defend it um, e6 is a little bit of a concession because it blocks blocks in his bishop um, so we'll see what he does maybe well so bishop e6 I was thinking that I should be able to play knight g5 here that is what I'm going to play uh, so now it's a little awkward a little awkward for him to uh, to defend everything. I think his position is a little bit difficult. Um, you know, of course, if I can take on e6, double these pawns, I'm uh, I'm going to be pretty happy about that. Uh, I think that's what I'll do. All right, so I've doubled his pawns. So now the question is, what do we do next? Um, I'm thinking maybe just, what does bishop e2? I kind of want to recycle this knight now. Um, I'm actually... I think I'm going to go here. The knight, knight on h2 is coming to either um, either g4 or f3. So on this move now, I could certainly take the knight, but I think I like keeping the bishop pair here, so I'm just going to retreat. Um, looks like the bishop is, is still a pretty good piece, and I can always uh, take this knight later. Now I'm going to route to e5. I don't want to go via f3. If I'd gone via f3 instead, um, he would have had uh, knight takes h3 probably. All right, so now I get my knight to a good square. Um, so he may take, yeah, so I was thinking he would probably take. I'll take with the rook to keep uh, keep this sort of bind. Um, all right, so he's playing here. Now I can actually take on f4, get two pieces for a rook. So that's, and the thing is it's, it's two pieces, but they're also going to be very good bishops. Um, so that was a, a pretty difficult position for him. All right, good game, Olaf. I am off to a reasonably good start here. I think I played a, a solid game. All right, who we got here? Um, let's see. The next challenge was from uh, someone a little bit lower rated, D3 Rasp, uh, a five-minute game. Again, this is exciting today. I am looking forward to the rematch. Um, I don't. I think it's going to be kind of a friendly rematch, but we'll have to see. D3 Rasp is from Canada, my country my country of birth and origin. Olaf, thanks, it was a good game. Um, maybe next time I'll play a different opening. 
So I am following I'm following the chats today. If you're following us on Twitch, I am following the Twitch chat. I'm also following the Chess24 chat, of course. Again, a good uh, good opportunity today to become a premium member. Then you can challenge me and play um, and play me, but also play you know play everybody else that does these banter blitz uh, events. By the way, we're gonna have some special things going on next week for what is the uh, the Chess24 birthday. I think it's on uh, the 24th of February. Hi, chess kids. All right, so he's playing a modern. This would be a normal King's Indian, except that he's played the pawn on e6 instead of the pawn on on um, on d6. Um, I have to imagine that it's not a uh, that's not an ideal move. It might, you know, the least waste of tempo because you know generally Black wants to eventually play e6, uh, d6, and c and e5. Sorry, uh, here I'm thinking he might go for c5. Uh, but if he goes for d6, then I'm just I could do other things here, but I'll just play uh, classically. So I'll play as if he had not played e6, um, and so it looks like he's just kind of going to be um, down a tempo. That actually is a reasonable move because it justifies. Um, I probably could have taken on c5 here. Pawn takes normally there's queen a5, but with the um, with the uh, the queen uh, with the pawn already on e6, that would probably not have worked. So maybe I could have taken on c5. Um, so here, what do I do? So d5, then he, he actually e6 is a useful move. So I don't, I really don't want to play. Uh, I really don't want to play that. So I think I'm just going to develop. Uh, the question is how. I may just play h3. H3 seems to be a useful move in most of these positions. I might be preparing bishop e3. Um, all right. So now a5. That's a big weakness. Um, and so now. Now he's got a real, a real weakness. I mean, at different types of positions, this pawn is going to be uh, misplaced. I'm just going to play bishop e3. So, um, how's everybody doing today, by the way, in the chat? We are having, we've had beautiful weather where I sit here in Florida. It's been, uh, it's been pretty warm, um, which is, you know, of course, Florida tends to be warm, but it's been uh, unusually warm, I would say. Um, all right, what do I do? I'm thinking a little bit too much. I think I'll just play queen c2. Um, <coughs> at some point, he's going to probably have to take on d4, and um, I'm trying to keep the... the, the I'm going to play against the d6 pawn, so next move I'll probably play rook to d1, um, and eventually, um, you know, that pawn should be pretty difficult to defend. Um, All right, so I'll play rook d1. So now it's starting to be tempting at some point to take on c5, um, but maybe maybe it's better not to just yet. I also could play e5 at some point, um, which you know for, forces him to take take knight e8. Not a great square for the knight, but. So, I'm somehow I'm playing a little bit slowly in this game. I'm going to speed it up at some point. Um, I'll take. All right, so now on this move, now I can play e5, and it should be um, at least quite unpleasant for him. He has to play knight e8 now. Um, and I have pressure against d6, so I can take on d6. Knight takes d6, I have bishop f4. The pin is, is pretty unpleasant. I think it might just be losing there. Um, so probably not the best position, but he's played, you know, he's, he's played solidly so far for, for his rating. Um, he's given me a good fight. Now I took with the rook, one of the ideas is that the knight on h5 is, is sort of off... Um, Offside, I would say. Um, I'd like to play g4 here on g4. He may have bishop e5, which kind of muddy, muddies things a little bit. So I'm just going to start with rook d1, especially because this is a blitz game, so I don't necessarily have time to figure absolutely everything out. And now g4 should win a piece. Uh, if bishop g5, he has f6, and that's not totally, totally clear. So I'll play g4. Um, 
On rook takes d6, I can probably just take with a pawn. Uh, this way his queen is attacked, and then his knight is attacked, so it's a double attack, you could say. Um, yeah, I mean, I think now it's, uh, now it should be, um, it should be difficult. Uh, I'm going to win a piece. I am up a pawn, I guess, also. So on this move, I, I can try something cheeky here. Um, bishop g5, I think I'm going to play it. I don't see where his queen can go, so I'm um, going for a little bit more here than just the knight. Uh, taking the, the knight was not bad. All right, he says good game, good game to you too. All right, so who's next? We have uh, we I have quite a few challenges here. Uh, I think. All right, let me pick someone a little bit higher rated, and then I'll so a specter uh, challenged me to a five minute game. I'm going to start with this one, um, and then then I'll uh, then I'll go to some of the earlier challenges. I like to kind of. Mix it up between the really high rated players and the not as high rated players to give everybody a chance and also so everybody can see can see something a little different. Alright, so D4. My opponent is from Germany. Alright, what are we gonna play? Um let's play let's try a Benko Gambit, maybe. This is not an opening I normally play. Uh but I don't normally play I haven't been playing tournament chess in a while, so it's not clear what I normally play. Um, all right, so queen c2 already takes me out of book. Uh, I, well, actually, I, I, I mean, I've seen this move before, but the idea, I think the idea is that on b takes e4, you play e4 and play that way. Um, I think I'll play d6. I, I you know, eventually it, it kind of leads to the same kind of position. I, I'm sort of tempting him to take here. Um, which he can do at various points. I don't think it changes too much the character of the position there if I play a6. I mean, at some point I'll, I will uh, I will uh, take on c4 and it's sort of a game of, you know, um, with the with the sacrifice pawn, you actually open up some lines um, which you don't you don't open up if he doesn't. So clearly he was playing for uh for for sacrificing um, sac sacrificing his pawn back. Uh, which you know leaves me with fewer open files. Um, I don't really mind this particular version of this. I think now it's time to try to crack the center open a little bit. Um, I think white is okay, but but black you know shouldn't have any. This is at least like an equal position I think for black because um, he's not he hasn't castled yet, so he's got to he's got to get his king to safety. And by the time he's done that, so here on this move. I'm going to have a nice check on the e-file, which, you know, is, is a little bit annoying for him. Um, now, let's see. I have different interesting ideas here. Um, queen b4 maybe is interesting. I, I'm looking at things like bishop f5 also. Uh, bishop f5 actually looks quite uh, quite tempting. Yeah, I'm going to play bishop f5 first. Just, you know, develop a piece, attack um, the queen. And there's, there's sort of tactics. I mean... I, I also had bishop h6, but bishop h6, he would have guessed have sacrificed a pawn, and I don't really know what would have what would have you know happened after that. So now, now I'm thinking queen b4 check is maybe a little bit annoying for him. He's got knight d2. Um, I also have this kind of interesting idea: knight takes d5, and then if he plays bishop takes d5, I have bishop b2, but that's not totally clear. I could play maybe first rook b8. There's a lot of a lot of moves here that are possible, and I don't know which one to make. Uh, my indecision, indecision here. So knight e4. How does he defend the b2 pawn? Is one question, right? Um, I don't know what the answer to it is. So maybe that's my answer. Maybe that's what I should do. Um, yeah, we'll start with that. So, it took forever. I made a move. I don't know if it was the right move. All right, so he goes here. Now, I'm tempted to just play a5, a4. There's still this queen b4 check, actually. Maybe here I have to give that check just to see how he can actually, um, 
um, what he can do because so knight d2 now I was liking this move bishop d4 I think I'm just gonna play it um, he's pinned sort of in a few directions here so I think this is gonna be a fairly irritating move um, of course you know if he takes then I have knight takes d2 check um, among maybe other ideas but knight takes d2 check is definitely good because I can then take on b3 with check also so I don't see what he does here actually if he castles then there's bishop takes e3 and sort of you know it looks like I win a piece um, a3 doesn't look good um, I can either play well I think the simplest is just to go queen a5 and not not be too uh, so on this move now I'm I think I just play knight takes d2 is the simplest uh, usually when you can do a discovered check you know you're pretty happy about it so I'm just gonna alright so he goes here now I have various discovered checks um, but I think I'm gonna go for the simplest one here knight takes b3 takes a piece it's check and his queen and rook are hanging so now um, now I've won a lot of material um, so kind of an interesting little game Uh, I want to play where takes e3. Of course, he's down uh, a lot of material here, so I'm. Uh... Did he offer me a draw? He's offered me a draw. I guess I don't have a button actually that shows the draw offer, but I will respectfully, of course, decline just because I have a lot more pieces. All right, he has decided to um, to make it last one more move. All right, well I will. Uh, I will checkmate here. Good game. Uh, good game. A Spectre. Thank you. All right. Next, next, next challenge here. Uh, we are going to play. Let's see. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to scroll here. Um, I'm a little slow at this, as you can see. All right. Onam. A three, three minute with two second increment game. I'll play d4. I'm sort of alternating my first moves. By the way, if if you have a suggestion for a first move, I'm uh, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to take suggestions. All right. So we'll play the exchange variation of the queen's gambit declined. That is a classical, uh, a very classical line. Uh, I guess here I'll play e3. Uh, you can play also queen c2 first. Uh, and so now, all right, so there's different plans here you can play, you know, with knight f3, you can play with knight e2. Um, so he's going for a plan where he's going to try to trade um, trade his bishop. Um, this move, bishop g4, is probably not accurate because when I play f3, he goes bishop h5. Um, now I can play knight f4, and I don't think that's really the way he wants to, uh, the way he wants to, um, to trade it because now I get the bishop pair. I mean, it still it still is playable, of course. Uh, I'm probably in castle on the queen side just to keep things fun. Yeah, so I'm gonna castle queen side. Um, now h6, h6 I can take on f6 and take on g6, so he can't really do that. Um, so um, you know, it's still a sharp position here. I don't know if I'll play. So if he goes here. I'll just play king b1. I like to kind of start with that and then uh, then see. Uh, I'd like to at some point play e4. Got to be care a little careful here. We have a little queen, uh, little queen x-ray here. If I play e4, so maybe I should start, for example, with h4. Especially because it seems hard for him to play h6 because of that knight on g6. Um, you know, so all right. So b5 is a standard way to get some play here. I do have some tactics. So I think I can play, for example, knight takes d5 with queen takes c6, um, and I, so I think that's not right for him. You know, it's going to fork a lot of things. I could also take the b5 pawn, but I'd rather take the pawn that's in the center. Um, so I think this is not this is not going to be a great position. Well, so the sleepy one is asking if I take one minute challenges. The thing is, I can, but then you know. 
how much am I going to be able to talk if I'm playing a one minute game? Probably not too, too much, frankly. I would try. Um, so, you know, we'll see. If I, maybe at the end I'll play a one minute game if, if, if there's enough, if there's enough of a demand. Has anybody else bought these shirts, by the way? I am, I've been wearing them proudly in my, uh, in my banter blitzes. I do wash them, by the way for all those wonder, wondering. Uh, I'll take the the rook and then I can take the knight with check. Um so I'm taking I'm taking a few pieces here. Um and I think I will continue to check. Alright, good game. Good game Onam. Alright, so let's see here. Uh next I see Always Blame the Mouse, which is a great name from Sweden. Hi, uh, Teha Ravi. I think I see you on my list. I'm, I'll uh, try to accept your challenge next. All right, so I am white again. That's great. I'll play e4 in this game. Always blame the mouse. So we'll see what happens if he does make a mouse slip, I guess. Or not a mouse slip, but just, you know, he'll blame the mouse no matter what. Maybe that's why um, sometimes it's hard to play fast. All right, so Queen D6. We've seen Magnus Carlsen, our uh, resident um, resident world champion at Chess 24, uh, play this variation quite a few times. So I guess it's getting it's getting a good solid rep. Um, there's there's a lot of plans for for both sides actually. You know, Black sometimes plays with C6, sometimes plays with A6. Uh, they're all a little bit different. All right, so he plays with A6 here. Um, so I think I'll just play G3. There's a again. There's there's a lot of lines. 95 is a little more aggressive, but G3 is more of a more of a positional move. Uh, sometimes with Bishop F4 to uh, to harass the queen a little bit. All right. So now he's threatening my pawn. I think I'll start with Bishop F4. Um. Normally there's, I guess, queen d8 here, but he could try, um, so bishop f3, bishop f3, queen take d4 doesn't work because I can play bishop take c6 check, interposing and winning the queen, uh, but he can play queen b4, so queen b4 is interesting. Now, uh, if I play a3, queen b2, knight a4, he actually has a square there, which sometimes they don't have, so he has, um, you know, he has that, um, that b5 square, so he escapes. Um, so, may have to sacrifice a pawn here. I think I'll just castle and, and we'll see what happens. Um, he can try to castle long, maybe. All right, so he's got pressure, obviously, against my d pawn. Uh, so he's he might win a pawn. The question is, how do I get how do I get play here? Um, in return, and I may not have played this very well. <clears throat> I might try d5. Um, gets a little gets a little murky here. He can try to take on b2. Um, and then we have just a messy, messy position. I can try taking on c6, sacrificing the queen. I may actually sacrifice the queen here anyway. Um, I just don't know if I should first start with like a3. Doesn't seem to really add much to do that. Yeah, I'll sacrifice the queen. I think it, you know, in the worst case, I get a rook and piece. Um, and my bishop on my bishop on uh, g2 will be pretty strong. So I, I kind of like the the chances that I have here. Um, all right, maybe he could have tried queen b7. I wonder if I should have uh, maybe not played this so fast. All right, so now at some point I'm going to want to play um, which rook. Uh, the f rook looks more logical, but I don't like that sometimes after queen b2 the rook actually gets attacked. I'm actually going to play the other rook, I think. 
All right, so now I may have ideas like 95, you know, if he doesn't do anything, of course, I'm sure he's going to do something. Um, but 95 is sort of in the cards um, with ideas of knight c6 check. Also knight d4, so like on bishop d6, for example. Uh, it's definitely tempting to play knight d4. I think it might be good. I'll just play it. Um, I have to speed it up a little bit. I've been a little bit slow. Uh, so my next move against most of his moves will be knight c6. And um, I think in some of those cases I'm up material. <laughs> so if he goes, you know, bishop takes rook, so he takes a rook. I go knight c6, check. The king has to take is the only move. Then I take on b4 with check. He takes, um, sorry, he has to move somewhere. And then I take on d1. I'll be at least up a piece there. Um, and I may have even knight moves too. So um, I don't know what he does against knight c6. I mean, he's got, he can move the queen so that then, uh, all right, so this move, now I think I'll be up material here. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to be up a rook. I guess I can take with the pawn. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'll take with the rook. Um, yeah, so now I'm just up of material. So interesting game. wasn't wasn't as simple wasn't as simple as it looked. I would say I may have actually been in trouble. Um, all right. So let's see here. The game. Who's challenging me? Thank you. Somebody said nice sacrifice. I I appreciate it. Um, ham sandwich has been challenging me for a while, so we will play ham sandwich. Um, someone is asking if I'm reading the chat in the Twitch chat, and I actually am reading the chat, so I just haven't seen all that much in it, but I'm reading it. Sorry, I had to move my board here. Sometimes my mouse scrolls without me uh, telling it to. Uh, thank you, always blame the mouse. That was a good game. All right, so he plays e4. So now we transpose to a modern. The bishop on f4 is a little bit odd, but it's actually, it is a line. So, uh, and if he plays queen d2, it, it sort of can easily uh, transpose. Um, so he can certainly trade that bishop with bishop h6. Um, I think I can play c5 here. I don't really, I don't really remember, but that doesn't seem too crazy to me. Zomardan was complaining in the uh, Twitch chat that I wasn't following, but he, he got caught. I am following it. Sometimes it might take me a second to respond, but I do, I really do try, I really do try to, um, to follow all the chats. So now we have a sort of a regular dragon style position, except that um, he, he has uh, traded the bishops already, which is not a bad thing for white. But I'm pretty um, I'm pretty well developed, so I think I think uh, black is fine here. I think I'm gonna go after this knight um, just to kind of gain time. Um, so I may play like rook c8 um, and um, try to start preparing like bishop f3, knight e5, knight c4. You know, sort of a normal. I could also maybe try. Might start with queen a5, so I can play the other rook. You know, that's another. Sort of standard plan. All right, so he goes knight to d4 back. Well, not back, but um, not back because he was never actually there. But he had played uh, queen takes d4, so he's wasted a little bit of time, but he's still uh, he's still doing okay. I'll play rook c8. Um, Maybe F3, you know, sort of a normal, normal move. I'll just go back to D7. He can try some H4. I may play H5, or I could play, you know, I could also maybe consider either taking on D4. So now this move. <clears throat> so he hasn't. I don't really want to play Knight E5, Knight C4, because he's he's wasted absolutely no time with that bishop. 
So I don't love that, but I think I'll just take and then play queen a5. Um, so now in some cases I'm threatening rook take c3. Um, not that it's, it's not really like a super threat, it's just a, a little threat. All right, so now I think I'll play bishop e6, put pressure against the a2 pawn, uh, and also stop his bishop from coming out over here. Um, he can play knight d5, and then I, I would probably take it, and we have sort of a normal normal structure where I think I have a reasonable, um, a reasonable version of it. I might have other moves too, like I could try rook c5 first maybe, or something weird because he's, he's got a2 hanging in the back. <clears throat> Alright, so he does do that. So I'm thinking I'll take maybe take and then play queen c5 um, try to trade queens and play against the uh, against the bishop not being so amazing but his position has been you know he's, he's played well what else so if, if I don't play queen c5 I guess I could play Otherwise, there's rook c5, b4 I didn't love. Although, maybe I can still play queen b6 there. Maybe that's actually a little more interesting. I'll do it. So now, of course, I'm threatening rook takes d5, which would kind of win the house. Um, so he's got to play something like either, you know, bishop c4. But bishop c4, I just play rook fc8, which seems to at least help me. The bishop doesn't look uh, fabulous on b3. And then, you know, my goal will be to basically, um, over a few moves, try to try to destabilize that bishop um, with, like, a5, a4. Um, maybe... But I have to make sure that he doesn't get in first with, uh, you know, g4, g5 is coming. He's played very well so far. So we'll play queen c7. Um, now I guess g4, I can probably just play something like um, king g8. You know, of course he's, he wants to Alright, so he goes here. I'm also wondering about an exchange sacrifice. But that's not entirely clear. Uh, maybe I can get away with a5. gets sharp, but we'll try. Um, I actually have to start playing a little bit faster. He's played really well. Uh, I am thoroughly impressed. Um, yeah, it, gets, it just gets messy here. So on g4, I might even try... Okay, so he plays there. Now I'll play b5. i got to try to uh, open up this position. At some point, I may have rook takes c2 as an idea. Um, but we have, a, we have ourselves a, uh, a complicated position here. So on g4, I'll take on a4. Um, actually, I could consider rook takes c2 also, but I think it doesn't do anything. He just plays g5. So it's a. So on this move, I'll take on a4. All right. Now, now I think I can play rook c4. Uh, I'm attacking the queen, and then hopefully I can take that bishop. And maybe now I'm finally breaking through. But he's got you know. Um, this has been a complicated game. Not an easy game at all. So if he plays queen queen to d2, I take on a4, pawn takes g6. I can't recapture with the h-pawn because uh, there would be queen h6, queen h8 mate. 
but I should be able to just recapture with the F pawn and that should be uh, just solid. Um, it's going to take him a while to generate anything there and meanwhile I should be able to, well I'm up a piece there so um, I should be able to break through his defenses. Um, having played queen d3 I could consider that capture but I won't. Uh, just too dangerous he would go queen d2 and so on. So, But now I think the king is, is actually fairly safe. Uh, it's not, even if he gets g4, g5, you can always play knight h5. So I've, I've sort of survived. Yeah, always laying in my house. I, I actually talked about um, queen b7. I, I sort of missed it because I, I forgot that it would attack the uh, knight on f3. So yeah, that would have been, uh, that would have been a, quick, a quick turn in your favor. So now I'll just play to trade queens, I guess queen c4. Um, maybe that's, some people would say that's a chicken way to play this position, but uh, all right. So I have survived somehow all of these games so far. Um, all right, so let's see. I have a challenge here from um, all right. Dr. Forkan, 2200 here. I'll play this game. Yeah, so always blame the mouse. Could have gotten a, a Pascal scalp, so to speak, uh, if he had played queen b7. I think it was one of those things where, you know, the, the uh, you immediately want to move the king and not open up the line, so we both sort of had a blind spot. It happens. Um, all right, I'm going to play a different line here because I keep, I'm, I've played a this exchange variation a few times. So now I'm going to play the knight c3, knight f3 line. All right, this bishop, uh, bishop f5, what do I do here? I'm trying to remember. I'll just play queen e2, but I forget, I forget there's other moves here um, that are playable. All right, so now I get the bishop pair. Um, this one. I'm not too worried about this variation for white because at the least I have two bishops and I can play so maybe be a little bit better not going to be too much I may actually fee and shadow both bishops why not um, but you know of course black is super solid it's just sort of a sort of a microscopic edge maybe and maybe there was a better way for me to develop my pieces I, I don't know but uh, I'll take a microscopic edge these days my bishops are both sort of reasonably placed, I think. Um, the question is, do I want to play d4? And sometimes, probably. Um, I don't know if I want to play it now. Well, actually, he doesn't have e5 yet, so yeah, it seems reasonable here since he doesn't have e5, and I'll, I'll kind of put my pieces on it so that it's not so easy for him to play it. Um, he can play c5. Then on c5, I can probably just play rook d1, and eventually, you know, the position will open up for the bishops. All right, so he goes there. He's still not threatening e5. Um, so I'm going to start with rook d1. If he plays rook e8, fine. Um, you know, I don't mind that too much. I think now is very tempting to play knight e5 just because the rooks, the rooks seem a little bit silly on the e-file once there's no way that they'll play e5. So I'm going to play this way. Um, yeah, I don't love his position here. I think there's a there's a few holes. A few holes to cover. The knight is not a stable piece on d5. Um, it gets kicked away. And so now, well, certainly it's not game over, but I don't I don't like his position. Um, I'll probably start with bishop a3 because it provokes c5, which seems a little bit odd, but I like provoking c5. Um, then I'll just play probably f4. And uh, yeah, so I like I like this position. Um, my bishops, his knight actually seems seem to be a little bit. Uh, I don't know the word for to describe them, but they're not. Huh. Undisputed twenty nine here is giving me a little theory lesson, which is I appreciate it. Thank you very much. 
um, on why uh, Bishop F5 is not so great. Actually, that's what I sort of re I remembered that it wasn't supposed to be so great, but I couldn't remember why. And so that is very helpful. Thank you. All right, so now my bishop on a3 has kind of done its, its job, so I'm probably going to just recycle it back, back to b2 so that sometimes I may want to play for the attack here with like g4 and f5. Um, but I can also play more positionally. I mean, and I could play maybe h4, h5 first. It, it's sort of hard to know how you how best to improve. All right, so this move, he wants to play a4, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, I'll play h4 to start. You know, I think I could start. And there's also queen c6 somewhere. You know, the thing is, the I could also double rooks, maybe rook d3, rook d1. So on this move specifically, I think I, I'll play rook d. I'll start with rook d6. Um, and then rook d1. His position, you know, the rooks, the rooks on the e file are really a little awkward. At some point, he's gonna have to play like. Okay, so he goes there. I'll, I'll play rook d1. I'll just double on the file. I suppose he can try to play rook d7 here, yeah. Um, but it's still not incredibly easy. And so now I think I, I'll play f5 because I, I want to eventually open up the position for my bishops. And while the knights are really far away from the king, uh, it seems like that's you know a good time for it. to try to start attacking. All right, so this move. Now, do I want to play with f6, or do I want to take on e6? Or maybe even sneakier is to play something like queen f4 just to, to defend. But the thing is, uh, <clears throat> I'll play queen f4 just because i got to make a move and not lose on time. And now my idea might be to play just f6. Um, all right, so now he takes. I've sort of been assuming that I have some tactics here. Um, but what exactly, I'm not sure. I have to believe that my position is going to be good here, but I don't. I haven't exactly worked it out. So, um, so now I got to take, and then I figured I can play either, either bishop d5 on rook takes d6, either bishop d5, or maybe I'll just play bishop d5. And you know, there, there's threats of like rook e5 somewhere. Um, I gotta watch the g3 pawn in some cases. Um, so I'm probably threatening bishop f7 here, among maybe other things. Queen f7, of course, um, also. And you know, if he plays like rook g6, I can play bishop f7. Uh, there's a move rook takes d5, you know, with taking on g3, which is maybe maybe possible, though I, I, I don't think it's gonna work out that great him but at least that you know trade some pieces um, I guess I would probably play Queen d5 Queen g3 Queen g2 and I think that's gonna be a good end game for me but because uh, his Knights are really bad but let's see so he does play that uh, so if I play I can also play Rook takes d5 but it does look a little well, actually, it's not it's not so easy for him after queen takes g3, king f1. He doesn't have any checks, and I'm threatening rook d8. So that's kind of interesting, although it looks it just looks kind of wrong to to let the king start walking. Hard to say. I'll try it. More more of a fun move, I guess. So he doesn't have any checks, as far as I can see. Um, but he could play, you know, some kind of... Now, my idea was that on these kinds of moves, I have... Okay, so this move... He is covering everything. For now. So what do I do? So I can create threats. Um, 
not ex not that trivial really. I, maybe I misplayed this a little bit. I'm gonna play queen g5, um, threatening you know a few different mates, but it's not it's not totally clear actually. I think I I sort of messed this up a little bit. Um, so now I'm threatening mate on g7. Oops. Well he hung mate, but that was a that was a difficult uh, that was a difficult game. All right. Well, somehow, somehow. All right. Well, been doing a lot of talking. I don't know how well I'm playing. Who's next? We got a. Uh, let's see here. Gaith, 1918. Been challenging me for a little while. Again, in in uh, we're about 45 minutes away now from the long-awaited rematch between famous legend Gato Kamsky and some some something uh, Cristobal, who by the way is a very strong player. He's, he's very strong and list, very talented. Um, they will make peace today over the chessboard, and uh, we'll see. I think I, they're playing with a little bit of an increment, a two-second increment, which. Uh, some might think we'll play in Gata's favor, but you know it's never, uh, never so simple either. All right, so I'm playing. Let's play. Uh, let's play a Grunfeld structure here. Play d5. Um, this is a structure I know absolutely nothing about, so you can look forward. Okay, so he's playing for the the queen exchange line. Um, that is, I'm not happy with this opening choice that I just made um, because it's just not what I want to play in a blitz game. This is one of these end games that's maybe a tiny bit worse for uh, for black, um, and and I don't know how to play it, so it's it's not uh, it's not a good uh, not a great choice. So let's see. I guess I need to develop my knight. Um, I'm not sure about the knight. well knight d2 is a standard plan, but I don't know if it, in that exact position is the most accurate. So now. Let's see. So he wants to play knight c4. I think I'll start with knight c5. Um, at some point, maybe I can play e5. Maybe I can play f5. You know, I'm gonna try. I'm probably gonna try every every wrong move to uh, to make the position more interesting. But that's maybe not the right approach. All right. So he's attacking my knight, of course. So knight c5 was probably not very useful because I, I definitely don't love the knight on e6 here. Well, yeah, I think I'm just going to go back. Sometimes you just got to admit that your move was not that great. <laughs> a4. So he's playing. He's playing well. What do I do here? This is definitely not what I what I felt like playing today. <laughs> a slightly worse endgame. So now on a5, maybe I can play b5, or, or maybe I can just develop the bishop, I don't know. Um, that position is going to be a little worse for me. You can play with a5 and then maybe push a6. I um, guess I could also play... So if I play b5... I think I'll play b5 just because it's I just can't stomach the other position. B4. So now I actually don't mind that. Now I can play a6, and I'm going to prepare to play c5 at some point. Um, I mean he's bringing a knight. Yeah, so he's going to bring his knight to c5. Makes sense. Um, all right. I'm just I'm just going to start um, playing playing things to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, he so far has been uh, has been has been playing very positionally positionally sound moves. All right, so he's going here. I guess I'll take with the pawn. Um, I don't know if he should have taken. Maybe there were more circumspect move circumspect. Yeah, I don't know if Gata is going to wear a shirt. I don't know if he's got one. Maybe he does have one. I'm not sure, but that would be great. All right, so now I may I may want to keep knights, right? So 
well, not really. I would like to keep knights, but not not in that not in that particular way. Um, so now if he takes on d7, I still think he's he's definitely a little better here um, with like rook d1. It's just a just an annoying position for me to play. He's got the c5 square. My pawn on a6 is sort of fixed and weak, so uh, I just have to kind of grovel and hope to find uh, some resources later on. I'm, I'm probably on rook d1. I would play bishop b6 and then bishop d5 and see what happens. I mean, but again, it's I'm I'm pretty annoyed with even getting into this endgame position. Yes, maybe a lot. It's possible that he's a lot better than you. <laughs> I mean, you know. All right. I was kind of hoping that he would let me keep knights. Uh, not because keeping knights is that great for me, but I just, I'm just excited about having the knights on the board. So now I was going to play something like f4, bishop f5, which still isn't entirely clear, but at least uh, I'm getting some activity. Uh, if he takes, I mean, if he plays bishop d3, I probably, maybe I can take... Um, and then play rook d8 or something like that. Uh, so it's getting a little bit more interesting for me anyway. We'll play rook f. Oops. So he took with the rook, which surprised me. I almost had pre-move rook d8. That would have been a, a not very good pre-move. Um, so now, now I'm, I'm I'm getting some sort of. Okay, so he goes rook d6 now. So he's, he's surprising me with almost every move now. Uh, I'll play knight d5, threatening the, the pawn on b4. And maybe I'm sort of getting... Um, I'm at least getting counterplay now. Um, the b4 pawn is weak. He can't take on c6 because of a fork. Um, and then my idea would probably be to play something like rook d8. All right, so he goes here. I can't predict any of his moves. That's not a good... It's not a good sign for me, although I don't know if this one is that great because I can play rook f6 as sort of a simple simple move to, to pin him. Um, all right, he goes there. Good move. Bishop b4, probably a good move. So now maybe I can just play rook to e8. I can't really... Actually, I can play bishop f8, knight f8, rook f8. Um, and I think everything is defended sort of becoming a funny position. I'll, uh, I'll play bishop f8. I mean, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm hoping that, you know, in some cases I have some knight e3 check moves too. Um, I'm hoping that I'm getting into a good end game here. Um, now I would like to take on d6 on the next move, if allowed. I crush 83 seems to be um, skeptical skeptical about my play. It's true that this is probably not the right position for me. Uh, but that being said, I think I have escaped for the most part. So now, how do I play this? Hmm. So I think I can actually take and play rookie rookie eight um oh actually rookie eight there's i don't like that um uh, maybe i shouldn't have done this so now if i play rook d8 he plays bishop e5 and if i play rook e8 he might have just rook e5 hmm. which is not really what i wanted to happen um All right, I got to I got to start picking up the pace. So I think on this I'll just play rook e8 now. I'm just trying to be a little sneaky here. Um this actually is not that great. He can play like rook e4, something like that. He's, he's So this I was sort of hoping for. Now I can play knight e3. I mean, this is probably I've misplayed this actually quite royally, but um but I think I'm still a uh, I'm still fighting, uh, so I can't take there, so I'll go rook d3. If I take on g2, of course, there was a 
but now maybe my CPON will actually become, well, will it become strong or will it become weak? Only the future will tell. All right, so he goes there. Maybe this position is getting complicated. I'll play knight c2 with the idea to play knight d4 and some knight b3 somewhere. I don't really know what I'm, I'm actually, I think every move I'm making is slightly dubious um, right now. Oh, so now he finally blundered. So I um, finally, I'm getting a good position. All right, I should be able to win this one now. I have time too. Well, it wasn't pretty, but somehow, <laughs> um, nobody laugh at me, yeah? Nobody laugh at me, please. All right, we're going to play Jorzik. Jorzik, a nice Russian name. A five minute game, 2200 here. I still have a little bit more time, I think. Play more people. All right. Whew. I have survived. I have to breathe. I need. I need. I need to hydrate. I think I haven't hydrated enough. This is some, some nice sparkling water here. I'm not going to put my bishop on g7 anymore because that doesn't work out well for me. All right, c4 here. Ah. Uh, all right, we'll play. We'll play the semi-slav structure. Yeah, he played a he played a very good game. Uh, 1900. Uh, 1900 played like a lot more in that game, in my estimation. All right, so this is actually kind of an annoying line. He played it well. Um, this knight d2 move is a little irritating. I have had a game like this actually with white before. Against, I forget who it was against actually, but. I remember that uh, this knight d2 line is a pretty good uh, is a pretty good pretty good setup for white. Uh, I don't think he's played it quite right no, though, because now um, I've managed to untangle. So you know, from having a big space disadvantage, I'm I'm okay, um, and the d4 pawn is a little bit weak, and I'm probably ready if I want to equalize. I could probably just play c5 uh, in one of the next few moves. Um, so we'll start with rook d8. The question is, is there a way for me to keep a little bit more life in the position? So, the c5 pawn takes c5, bishop g2, queen d7 has a, a good chance of being pretty boring. Um, wonder if I could start bishop b4 looks a little unnatural right um, yeah probably just have to play c5 and you know um, I don't have to necessarily take on d2 I could maybe play queen c8 or some other move to keep uh, keep queens on the board and that's probably what I'll do just you know these are blitz games kind of want to keep it more fun. So I'll probably play queen c8. Okay, so he takes there. I'll, I'll take him. Um, this this I, I kind of like. I think, you know, my my, uh, my structure is decent. So he plays d5. I'll take. Um, at least, you know, this should be a playable sort of position. He does have... I have to watch out for d6, of course. Um, maybe... Maybe, maybe I should have been more concerned about equalizing than uh, than trying to win. But I'll play bishop d6 on uh, on bishop g5. I think I can play bishop e5, and it's looking okay. I may be able to take on c3 if, if he doesn't do anything, so he took it. All right, so now I get my bishop on a nice square on d4, and the pawn on d5 doesn't look quite as solid as it did a few moves ago. Um, so, you know, I don't know. If he's forced to play, well, I guess he can try, so this move, so he's got the idea, a beautiful idea that if I play queen takes d5, 
you'll go knight f6 check, bishop f6 and take my queen and boom. So I and the same thing basically if I take uh, the other way. Uh, thankfully I can play h6, create Luft for my king. Um, on queen g4 I can play f5. I don't see any sort of also here. Well, here I think f5 is just going to be good. Um, but otherwise I was going to take on d5 and be better. So, you know, this is this is a, a good game. Thank you, Jožek. Spasiba, I should say. Um, all right, what time is it? 12.30. At some point I have to make sure that uh, Gata is... Uh, Signed on and ready to go, but I still I still have some time. So all right, I can play Chess Gronk. Uh, Chess Gronk must be a, a a very strong player, by very strong 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 like Gronkowski. Who I guess he doesn't play anymore, but he was a very good tight end, maybe one of the best ever. Uh, we'll play the Sicilian. Oh all right, that's a very if I if I had to imagine Gronkowski playing um, playing chess, I'm pretty sure he would play b4 against the Sicilian, almost for sure. So so I think this makes sense that my opponent would play this way. Um, this variation I forget I actually always forget how I intend to play here. I remember there was some move order I liked, and I'm pretty sure that I already can't do the move orders that I liked. So. Go figure. Um, yeah, so this. All right, well, I'll take on a3, right? You gotta play up a pawn. Uh, but these variations are actually, they're all pretty dangerous. They're all pretty dangerous. You know, you end up with knights on b5 and you gotta be careful. I'm gonna play knight h6. I'll develop. I'm, I'm not gonna play anything that he's ever seen before. Watch this. This setup. With knight h6 and g6 here, um, my idea at some point will be to play f6. I think this is looks not too too crazy. Um, well, you know, I like the idea of playing f6 just to kind of try to get some of that space back. Of course, you know, I can't retake on e on f6 with the e pawn. Um, I have to take with a piece, but I think that's okay. I wonder, maybe I should have played rook f6 actually to unpin my pawn. Alright, so here he's tempting me to, you know, take something. Um, but I think I'll just ignore him and go back uh, and not take. I was, you know, considering taking on d4 and rook f4, but it, you know, my rook gets. I don't like giving that bishop away. That bishop is too valuable. So I'm just going to go back, attack the knight. We'll see if he wants to move it again or if he wants to defend it. Um, and then I have a decision to make. You know, I may this knight on h6 may need to come to f5 and you know kind of get recycled or f7 or just go somewhere. Oh, he plays rook e1, and so now I, I just have to take the knight. Um, and I, I'm guessing he meant he didn't see it, even though I had just played bishop g7. So, um, so it wasn't exact. It was kind of telegraphed. Um, so I got a little bit lucky here that he uh, left it hanging. Um, all right, so now I am up a piece. I'm gonna go for e5 to uh, break up his center, even if it cost me a pawn. I don't know why I did that. That was really not necessary. But uh, all right, I'll play. I guess knight g4. So I'm threatening knight f2. Uh, I'm threatening the pawn on e5. But also I have this idea um, to play queen h4. All right, so he's letting me play rook f2. Um, well, rook f2 has to be pretty good for me. Um, <clears throat> with the pawn on e5 hanging also. Um, now, queen h4 is probably the most uh, direct. If he takes on d5, I just go, I just go, um, just go away. Um, and I'm threatening queen h2 mate. Um, all right, so on this move now I have rook g2, which will just mate. So uh, it's uh, 
So who do I want to bet on? Well, I think I would bet on Gata, but you know I think people people shouldn't underestimate uh, Cristobal. He's he's a he's a he's a very good player both in slow games and in uh, blitz games, and so I think it, I think it could be a really close match. All right. Um, so I will play now. Let's see who's here in the list. Schlunske. Um, I might not be pronouncing that right. Schlunske. I'm assuming that's a name from Germany. I was right. That's I should I should win a prize. Did Gata ever apologize? Well, he posted a few different things on Facebook. You know, which uh, you can probably follow him on Facebook and and see. Um, wasn't exactly what I would call an apology, but I think you know. I'm not sure that these guys hate each other at this point. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what they say, you know, when they actually uh, talk. But, uh, yeah. So this is a Trumpovsky. E3 is one move. On D5, you can also take on F6, double the pawns, and play, like, more of a... Um, so on this, I'll play Knight D2. Well, if Gata gets flagged in the very first game, I think that would be awesome, because then, you know, you'll see the gloves come off in... Uh, in a non-physical uh, sense, of course. All right, so now I'll I'll play f4. Uh, I'm not sure that that's the right way to play this position, but it's possible. My bishop is out of the pawn phalanx, so I can kind of try a stonewall setup. Um, not that you know, <laughs> not that this is going to give me anything incredible, but. Uh, We'll, I'll stick the knight to e5 next. Sometimes, you know, black waits to, to decide where they... Alright, so he is going there. Alright, so I have to trade... Of course, I have to trade that bishop. That was my whole point of getting him out of the phalanx. And so, the problem is that this could lead to a fairly stale position. Um, but I think I can take... Play ninety five and you know keep it uh, keep it kind of interesting here. Um, I wish I had played c three earlier so I could have some queen a four check. But maybe I'll play um, maybe I'll play c four next move so I can play c five something like that. I'm assuming he's not going to trade knights. Um, if he takes on e5, I'll take with the f-pawn. Okay, so he, he actually lets me trade knights if I want to. Um, interesting. Not a bad decision, actually, probably. Um, let's see. <coughs> well... I'll play c3, just a solid move. In some cases, he may play c5, so it's it's probably useful. Um, in some cases, maybe I can play queen a4 still. You know, queen a4 can be, if he moves this rook away, then queen a4 kind of targets the a pawn, the c pawn sometimes, the c6 square, maybe the e4 pawn in some cases, so it just seems like a c3 is a useful move. Um, I also could consider playing like, you know, a4, a5 somewhere. Alright, so c5, I'll play queen a4. Um, you know, I gotta get the... Uh, <clears throat> and now, you know, I could consider again playing some knight c6, but I'll probably just maybe put my f rook to d1 or... Alright, he takes. So I'll take... I'm hoping that the e4 pawn will at some point be a weakness. Um, it's interesting, maybe the queen would have been happier on the king side than, than where it is. Um, all right, f6, f6 pretty much always got to take it. Take it and then see. Um, so rook f6, let's see. My queen it does feel a little bit, um, a little bit off, caught offside a little bit. Although, I think, so if I make this move here, I'm assuming he's going to take with the queen. I can maybe play queen d7, and then my queen is kind of coming back to her 
quite promising square. All right, so he decided to take this way. Um, I think I'm happy to see this move. I'll bring my rook into the game. He'll probably play f5, but f5 does give me the e5 square, so then I might transfer the knight via c4. Uh, this move I I am also happy to see. So now, um, and at some point, by the way, I could take on c5, but he's got queen takes, and the pawn on e3 is, is under attack. Uh, it's tempting to play knight c4, or even in this particular position, I think now it's time to actually bring the queen back to um, to greener uh, pastures here. I think he's got the worst of it in this position. Um, f5 makes some sense for sure. And now maybe knight c4 to e5. I think it makes sense to bring that knight um, to e5. Still a game though, and you know I gotta figure out a way to to actually win. Um, queen g5 somewhere. I mean, you know, starts probably with king g7 here. Oh, well, here. So now. I was just going to say, I was actually going to say in the chat that this shouldn't be possible because I can take that bishop on b7. Um, well, is he saying that my knight is going to be trapped? That's kind of, huh. It's actually, it's interesting. He may, he may have a point. Um, hard to believe, but... You may have a point. I'm actually going to take this pawn. Um, I wasn't sure. Knight d6, and then he runs, and I don't know what's going on there. So I'm going to play this move. Now, um, my e3 pawn is still defended. In some cases, I can play queen d7 check. Um, in some cases, I can play knight d5 check. Um, so, for example, I'm, and, and then in some cases, I can get my uh, my queen to d4 to defend the kind of defend everything and that's a very nice square for the queen. So on this move I was intending to play knight to d6. Uh, gets a little complicated, huh? Knight e5 is also interesting, but he just I'm gonna play for the sort of more complicated way here. Uh, you know, it's a uh, my next move is gonna be queen d4. Um, I think I've got everything protected. You know, you can try some king e7, pawn takes c5, queen takes c5, rook takes d6. I have rook d1, um, and he has potentially he has some moves there. I also have an interesting move, which is to play knight takes f5 first uh, instead, which actually might win, but it's just I can't quite figure out the complications with very little time on my clock. So, um, so but so pawn takes e5, queen c5, rook d6, rook d1, bishop d5. Uh, I can at least have c4 there, which seems like it's reasonable. Okay, so this move I wasn't too worried about bishop a6 because now I think I'll just play rook a1. I'm threatening uh, knight f5. Um, he can try something like, I mean, he may have to play something like rook g8. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe I just play g3. But I think that's, okay, so he goes there. Not really understanding anything anymore in this game. I may just play, you know, I'll just cement my knight, so to speak. Um, all right, so he goes rook g8. Probably rook to d12. Well, rook d2, he's got some sort of counterplay. I'm not sure about all of this, the way that I played it. So 
But rook d2, queen. Oh, so he goes there. This move I'm happy to see. Um, i got to bring my knight somewhere so that I can do something. I'll just play rook f2 first. Queen e5 makes sense, threatening knight f5. If he goes queen e3, I have knight f5. If he goes there, I still have knight f5. I'm assuming that I'm going to have some good checks here. I do have to make sure I don't get myself uh, checkmated with... Um, So he's got some rook d1 ideas. What did I do that for? I don't know. Um, wow, no time. Wow. <laughs> Obviously at the end I just started making random moves. I should have taken on a7 among other things, but... Huh. All right. What time is it? 12.45. I think I'm going to play two more games. Let's see here. I got a lot of challenges here, which is great. I got let me win here. 2200 challenging me. Hmm. And then I'm going to play Teha Ravi because he's been challenging me since the beginning and I missed it early and then I lost it. So I, I, will, try to, uh, I will try to play Teha Ravi after this game. All right. E4. Let's play E5. Again, I try to mix up my openings, play almost a different opening every single game to just kind of keep it fun. Um, I'm going to play maybe, are we going to have a Ray Lopez or, or something different? Let's see. All right, the Italian game. I'll play knight f6. Um, inviting knight g5. Okay, he plays d3. I'll play bishop c5. This is, um, of course, very much topical these days, played by sort of everybody. Um, okay, so I'll play, let's see. I'll play bishop b6. So he's already castled. I haven't castled yet. Sometimes it actually makes sense to wait to castle. So with some plans like if he goes bishop g5 here with the king already on this side, you can play h6 g5. Okay, so he goes knight d2. Knight d2, I'll probably just castle because now um, he's clearly not playing for a quick uh, bishop g5. All right, so he goes there. So I think here, uh, actually, no. Knight a5, he has bishop b5, and he's okay. I'll play a6 threatening, so to speak, knight a5. He doesn't stop me, so now I, I get to eat his bishop. Um, bishop b3, I think, is more precise. This way he can return. You know, of course, these are just like little subtleties. Uh, um, and probably I was going to play a plan with uh, knight e7, knight g6. All right, so now I get to open up the position for the bishops. I think I can take here. Um, one question is on pawn takes d4. Can, can I or should I play... Uh, knight takes e4. Otherwise, I can make a more sort of um, quiet move. Uh, well, actually, I forgot that my uh, that my bishop is under attack here, so I, I actually misplayed this completely. <laughs> I I don't know what I was doing actually. All of this was bizarre. He could have taken he could have taken on b6. Um, I was having a moment of. Uh, of confusion. <laughs> um, I think this position is okay. Now, am I threatening to take on e4? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking of playing d5, though. d5 looks looks about right. I mean, I also could consider just playing h6 first. Because um, I don't like the potential pins. But d5 does allow me to kind of clarify that structure. Yeah, so I have to play d5, I think, is, is, is the right move. All right, so who, he goes here. Um, I'm kind of happy to see that move also. Now, it's kind of interesting to play knight e4 and bishop f5, but he may have something like bishop g5. I have to be careful there if I go, for example, knight e4, knight e4, bishop f5, bishop g5, queen d7. He may have a move like knight c5, and maybe that's not all that incredible for me. Well, could be losing a piece. That's what I mean by not that incredible. Um, that being said, you know, the, of course, the move, uh, the move knight d2 is not threatening anything. So um, I could just take on e4 and then play bishop f5. 
you've got some sort of tactics there. So all that said, what do I do? I think I got to take on e4, and then maybe. So bishop f5, knight f6 is not totally clear, um, not totally clear at all. So maybe I'll just play knight d5, and you know, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Position should be should be decent for black, but it's you always have to be careful not to get yourself checkmated. And I've been playing very slowly, talking a lot, not playing a lot. I'm gonna probably try to to change my talk talk to play ratio a little bit towards towards a little bit more um, playing. All right, so this move, uh, in some cases, he may want. I'm, I got to develop my bishop at some point, right? And at least now my king is less likely to get checkmated. Uh, he probably wants to play bishop g5, and then it's interesting. I mean, I could play maybe just f6. Um, he's not going to be able to checkmate me so easily. Uh, so here, I guess I would just go back. Um, I may want to consider a move that attacks his queen soon. You know, he can play bishop g5, queen d6 probably, and he's still he's still okay here. 95. Also, he can play maybe to take the bishop, and, but I'm hoping that it, at least I can get play against the um, play against the isolated pawn at some point. You know, if pieces come off, if we get to something that's more like an endgame, um, then then hopefully that weakness will uh, will show. I'll probably play. Okay, so he now I have to. Take, I'm assuming I'm just gonna take it um, and I'll probably just play h6 create some space for my king forces bishop to a potentially not incredibly good square I mean I guess h4 is a is not terrible um, especially because he's got ideas to play um, um, to play bishop g3 and then 95 All right, so I got to start moving here. I'll play c6, a little passive, but uh, but at least I'm keeping things defended. All right, he goes there. He's played well. He has played well. I will give him that. He might actually be a little bit better here, just because my uh, I've played a little passively. I haven't quite managed to uh, to get any activity, so I think he's he's doing he's doing well. I mean, I'm, I'm still solid, I guess, so it should be uh, should be okay for me. But I'm I've also played very slowly. I'd love to trade queens. Actually, I should have played maybe queen b4 there. Um, all right, so now. I also would like to get my um, get some rooks traded. <clears throat> Maybe I can play c5 somewhere. I have to watch for you know some potential attacks. I'm just starting. I'm just going to start making moves fast because uh, I've been playing way too slowly. Um, He's probably going to be a little bit better because I'm just kind of trading. I traded his isolated pawn away. Maybe it's equal. I don't know. It depends on depends sort of on specific tactics. But hopefully I can outplay him in the uh, in the fairly simple endgame that that ensues here. If he takes plays bishop d6, I'm happy to get a rook to the seventh rank. Okay, so he goes here. I suppose I can go for this. Take on g3. I'll play rook c3. Try to activate. Um, I don't have any back rank mates to worry about anymore. And maybe his pawns could get to be a little bit weak here. Now, if I can force one of his rooks to, to this, I'll take a pawn. Still not, you know, this is not going to be a trivial position to win, even up a pawn, because he's going to get rook to the seventh uh, and some pot potential counterplay. But at least I'm not I'm not in any kind of trouble anymore. 
and I'll probably just you know try to push this pawn a little bit and see the pawn is more likely to be used as a distraction than as a as something that will win by itself I think I'll try to trade one pair of rooks um, <clears throat> Although that might actually let him simplify a little bit more, because he might go takes, takes, and rook a7. Then, um, all right, he's going there. In this case, I'm happy that my pawn gets to advance one square further to a4, and I can support it with my rook on a8. Um, it is possible that he'll have some way of of, uh, of bugging it, but it's not too easy. So now he's not really threatening anything, so I'll try to bring the knight to attack the rook, probably to c4 to start. Now I get my pawn protected by the knight, which is nice. That means my rook can move. Okay, and I gotta finish my stream here, so I'm gonna. This is gonna be my last game because I gotta let leave the stage for Gata. So here we go. Thanks very much, everybody. I'm gonna stop for today. I have had a good time, uh, and uh, enjoy the next match. And again, you can use our discount code if if you would like to become a premium member. I highly recommend it. Thanks, guys.